Good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Josh Schimmels, the publisher and CEO of the Los Angeles Business Journal. It's an honor to host our 2021 Leaders in Law Awards. Once again, it's been a very busy year for our legal professionals. And today, we have the opportunity to recognize the significant role that in-house counsel plays in the success of their businesses. We also look to put a spotlight on the accomplishments of leading firm attorneys within the region's legal community. Each year, our final synonyries are recognized for their exceptional knowledge and responsibility, outstanding leadership, and their contributions to our community at large. We're gonna start off with our firm attorney awards. We'll name finals and honorees in seven different categories. Then we'll move into our in-house counsel portion of the program, where we'll name finals and honorees in five categories. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors for their continued support of our program, and of course, all they do to support our community of business. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor, USC Gould School of Law. Today, it's represented by Margaret Keene, Assistant Dean of Development. Margaret, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Josh. It's a pleasure. And special thanks to the LA Business Journal team for organizing this Leaders in Law event. And greetings to everyone. On behalf of the USC Gould School of Law, it's my pleasure to join you this afternoon to not only spotlight our honorees, but also to recognize the outstanding work that all of you do. Our Dean Andrew Guzman is unable to join us this afternoon, although he very much wanted to, uh, but he does send his congratulations and best wishes to everyone here today. And the USC Gould School is proud to sponsor the Leaders in Law event for the second year in a row. And it's terrific to be part of your well-earned and well-deserved celebration. And whether you're in person or in line, uh, it's always special when we can get together with the leading lawyers and in-house counsel from across the city in one place. So I'm pleased to be here for that. And at USC Gould, one of the pillars of our academic mission is to inspire our students to become innovators and impact makers to redefine excellence in the legal profession. And our goal is to prepare them to improve their organizations and people's lives. So in that light, it's very fitting to be here today and to take part in this event among all of you who are the innovators, the impact makers, and the standard bearers of excellence within your respective businesses and in the profession. So congratulations once again on all your accomplishments this past year. And without further ado, Josh, let's get started with the announcements of the 2021 Leaders in Law Awards. Thank you again, Margaret. We've got a great group here. I'm really excited to hear from them. I also want to take just a moment to thank our many gold sponsors, Baker McKenzie, Fisher Phillips, Houston Hennigan, Miller Berendez, Miller Kaplan, Snell and Wilmer, and Venable. Thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure getting to know many of you. Thank you for recognizing the importance of this program and uh, your contributions to the entire community. All right, it's now my pleasure to introduce the 2021 class of firm attorney nominees. Here they are.
congratulations to you, all of our nominees. Like I said, we've got an outstanding group this year. Okay, so for our firm attorneys, we are going to announce five finalists in each category and then one honoree. I'm pleased to have Margaret Keene joining me in the award presentation. And I'm gonna go ahead and kick things off with our first firm attorney award category, which is for Rising Star. Our final star, Michael Adamson with Susan Godfrey. He regularly represents both plaintiffs and defendants in courts across various industries. Jeffrey Rosen with Rosen Trust Law. Jeff has dedicated most of his career to the practice areas of tax, estate planning, trust, and creditor protection law. David Song with Nixon Peabody. This year, David worked on several billion dollar deals for the state of California, the city of Los Angeles, and the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Michael Tedesco with Houston Hennigan. Michael has experience in all phases of litigation, including this positive motion practice, depositions and appeals. And Charlotte Wen with Iral and Manella. Charlotte has been a core member of their team on their firm's highest profile cases, helping to secure nine and 10 figure jury awards. Congratulations to our first group of finalists and the 2021 honoree for Rising Star is Michael Tedisco with Houston Hennigan. Michael, I know you're here with us today. We'd like to invite you to come off mute and say a few words. Congratulations. Thank you, Josh. Uh, am I on screen? You are, you're good to go. All right, good. Uh, we avoided the classic 2020, 2021 hiccups uh, that I was secretly expecting. Um, well, thank you for that generous introduction and thank you to the LA Business Journal, both for hosting this great event um, and of course for the personal recognition, I am thrilled. Um, a second more selfish thank you after having watched the talented and accomplished list of nominees uh, scroll on the screen is uh, thank you for letting me go first uh, because I know there will be some tough acts to follow uh, later this afternoon. Um, briefly, uh, I think what makes this rising star category uh, unique amongst the categories today is that there is an understanding that there's room to grow and to improve um, and to, to rise. And that means within our firms and on our teams, um, there are people that we look up to, uh, mentors that we look to still to lead the way. Um, and I have had two of the very best. Um, in the last nine months, I've tried three cases with uh, John Houston and Moez Kaba. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, they're both partners at Houston and, and two of the most brilliant lawyers out there. Um, I ran the numbers earlier today and there have been seven days uh, since early February that I haven't been in one uh, trial or the other with John or Mo as we've had uh, three trials this year. Um, there were five days between our first and second trial and two days, that is uh, one weekend between our second and third. Um, and I know some might call that schedule uh, masochistic, um, but I really couldn't have asked for a better year. Um, we, we delivered great victories for our clients, uh, PwC and Endo Pharmaceuticals, and which was the first uh, trial win for the pharmaceutical industry. Um, after years of very challenging opioid um, litigation. So this personal recognition is in many ways a product of uh, the time and investment that John and Moaz and, and the whole firm have made in me. And I'll just give one quick example, which as many trial lawyers know, especially uh, the lawyer asking the questions during an exam has a second chair. And typically that's a junior or mid-level associate who hands documents, passes notes, um, not in the spotlight, not glamorous. Um, during my uh, first trial cross, my second chair was a guy named John Houston. Um, so needless to say, when he, he passed me a note, I listened. Uh, I was really lucky to have him there. Um, so thank you to, to John and Moez and the firm for going out on a limb so that I had uh, the opportunities to uh, that uh, you, you discussed earlier today. And on one last note, which is that I, uh, I mentioned the three trials that I've been in this year. What I didn't mention is that during that same period, I got married, I bought a house, uh, we renovated that house twice, and all while raising a puppy. Um, so thank you to my wife, Maggie, who is herself a busy litigator, um, not only for tolerating me and uh, not killing me this year, um, but for supporting me unwaveringly. Um, so thank you again, and I hope to see everyone um, at in-person events soon. 
congratulations again. Uh, I can tell just from the, the way you speak about your work, you're very passionate. I love that, you know, you mentioned your mentors, uh, particularly appropriate for this award category. Be before we let you go, um, is there one thing you can name just as something that excites you most about your work? Yeah, I, uh, I started off thinking that what I really liked to do was to write and to have time by myself in my office, sort of more of an ivory tower type setup, but particularly over the course um, of this year, I have learned to to love being up on my feet in court and to have that chess match type setup where it's you against a witness and and you know where you want to go, they know they don't want to go there, and it's just so much fun. There is true adrenaline um, in a setup like that that I think is really unique to our profession. I, I love that response, Tr truthful and, and open. Michael, congratulations. Thank you for being here. Uh, as we move into our next award category, Margaret, please join us and uh, announce our next award. Great. Well, up next is the real estate category. And our finalists are Megan Kachi with Latham and Watkins. And Megan advises on pro bono cases for local low income housing community organizations. Alfred Fryho Jr., Shepard, Mullen, Richter, and Hampton. He is the youngest member of the firm's executive committee and team leader of the Latin America and Hispanic business team. Salvador Lavinia, Barnes and Thornburg. And key for his real estate practice, Sal is a licensed California broker and works on his own deals. Casey Sobani, DLA Piper. Casey is responsible for managing the legal work for millions of square feet of commercial, industrial, and retail space. And Tyson Sohaji, Sohaji, the Sohaji Law Group. Tyson advises clients on infrastructure projects, mass transit fees, development proposals, and other land use issues. And our honoree this year is Alfred Fryho Jr with Shepard Mullen. Alfred, congratulations. The floor is yours to say a few words. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you, Josh, for this incredible opportunity to be with you all today. I'm incredibly honored to be recognized by the Business Journal, especially with such an incredible group of nominees. So congratulations to you all. I'm humbled by the recognition for doing something I truly love, which is to help clients in the real estate industry realize their goals with the least risk and the greatest benefit to their businesses and to the communities they serve. I have the privilege of working with many great companies that are improving the built environment and creating vibrant, resilient communities throughout California. I wanna thank my clients for the incredible privilege of serving them. I wanna thank my firm, Shepard Mullen, for allowing me the platform and my colleagues for making all of this possible. I'm incredibly humbled, I'm from Los Angeles, and to be recognized by a homegrown journal is especially um, um, special for me, and I look forward to continuing to do the work that I love to do every day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alfred. And I'd like to ask you briefly one question, and that is, I'm curious what the trend is that you've seen in regards to real estate law during the pandemic. Uh, I'm happy to talk about it. I know our time is limited. I would say, <laughs> Margaret, um, that for me, as a diverse lawyer, uh, the issue of ESG and social equity is especially prominent in everything that we do. Uh, we think about um, the particular impact around the pandemic to communities of color and low income, um, working class communities. And I would say my clients are especially attuned to those needs and issues. And it's been really great to think about the real estate industry and the work that we do differently through a lens on equity, through a lens on restoration and resilience, particularly around climate change. All those issues, sustainability included, I think are trending and are at the vanguard of how we build, as I mentioned, healthier communities throughout um, Southern California. So I feel like I'm in the middle of that. I feel like this recognition is part of uh, an affirmation of the work that I do every day. So I'm gratified by that and very excited about the future. I'm bullish about Los Angeles and the future of real estate and looking forward to making a difference. So thank you, Margaret. Well, congratulations, Alfred. Uh, up next is our litigation award category. Our finalists are Moaz Kaba with Houston Hennigan, 
Moez is also a founding board member and secretary for the Social Justice Legal Foundation. Jonathan Loeb at Blank Rome, his track record of success in high stakes cases has built his reputation within the real estate, healthcare, and entertainment industries. Sanford Michaelman at Michaelman and Robinson. Sanford's work outside the firm is very important to him, including his service as chair of the Federal Reserve Bank's Audit and Risk Management Committee. Dan Miller at Miller Barrandos. Dan formed an associates committee, providing an avenue to play a role in shaping the future of the firm. And Donna Wilson at at Manat Phelps and Phillips. Alongside her work as CEO and managing partner, Donna continues to serve as co-leader of the firm's privacy and data security practice. Our honoree in this category is Sanford Michaelman. Sanford, we invite you to come off mute and say a few words. Thank you, Josh. Can you see me okay? Yes, we can. Thank you. I wanna thank you and the Los Angeles Business Journal for this recognition and hosting this event. Um, it's, it's a very special and meaningful uh, uh, um, recognition for me. I appreciate that. I think everybody would agree that Los Angeles is a mecca for the finest courtroom lawyers in the country, which is why I, this honor is really uh, one that I'm proud of and, again, honored. I've litigated in almost every state in the country, and I can confidently say that Los Angeles is by far the best place to work and to litigate, and it's because of the skill and the talent of the people in our community. Now I have to say, I actually am in our New York conference room taking a break from a deposition. So I'm not sure if I should be saying this a little bit more loudly or whispering, but either way, I'm saying it. And finally, I do wanna say uh, again to the Los Angeles Business Journal that you do such a great job, Josh, you and your team on shining a light on the exceptional lawyers across our city from the different practice areas, practice groups, types of firms, and it's fantastic. And with that in mind, I wanna congratulate every attorney nominated in the Leaders in Law and especially my fellow partners and uh, other nominees are amazing litigators and I, and I sit in awe of them all the time. I assume this is true for many of you, but it's the other lawyers in Los Angeles that keep me on my toes and encourage me to do the best that I can. Many of the nominees I've litigated against with, and I could tell you it's, it's just being around them that makes me want to do better and you know, uh, keep working on my craft. Uh, just so impressed with them. This is another way of saying what I really love about being a litigator is we get to learn from each other and we get to push each other to do the best we can for our clients. It's an amazing profession. I'm fortunate to be a part of it. And again, thank you, Josh, and the Los Angeles Business Journal for this recognition. I, I appreciate that. You know, we, we may be the ones turning the spotlight on, but it's the attorneys who are shining bright. So it makes it quite easy for us to do so. Uh, before I let you leave, could you tell us maybe one or two areas of law that you think are gonna be particularly important in the next year or two? Um, a great question. So I'm gonna kind of merge a little bit of my Federal Reserve hat, as you mentioned, I'm on the board. Um, for good or bad, I think you're gonna see a spike in regulatory and then of course restructuring. You'll always have all the other normal self employment things of that nature that are, you know, it's gonna be um, bustling for a lot of reasons and litigation. But I think those two areas in particular given some of the fiscal measures going on in DC are gonna have an impact, especially on the coast. So I would definitely say in those two areas, regulatory and restructuring for sure. I appreciate this perspective. Thanks again, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time out of your deposition and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Absolutely, thanks Josh. Well, congrats Sam Sanford. And up next, I'm pleased to announce the bankruptcy category. And our finalists are Jeff Bjork, Latham and Watkins. He has represented clients in all aspects of restructuring, the investors, sellers, and purchasers. Eric Israel, Danning, Gill, Israel, and Kranzoff. Eric currently serves as the co-managing editor of the California Bankruptcy Journal. Abigail O'Brien, Mintz. She recently started working on a pro bono matter representing individuals seeking a way out of Afghanistan. Malhar Pagai, Polchulski, Stan, Zeal, and Jones. His practice focuses on developing and implementing strategic alternatives for and against distressed businesses. And Hamid Rafaju, Reigns Feldman. Hamid is a national board member of the Iranian American Bar Association. And 
our honoree this year is for bankruptcy, Jeff Bjork with Latham and Watkins. Jeff, welcome and congratulations. And would you please join us for a few words? Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Josh. I wanna thank the LA Business Journal for this recognition. Um, it's an honor to be named among the various finalists, some of whom I've known and call my friends and have practiced against. Uh, this is all a first class group of lawyers and I think it's among the best in our business and in our industry, even outside of LA. Uh, as an LA native, this recognition and being identified as one of the leading lawyers in this community is particularly meaningful to me and my family. Uh, special thanks to my family who's put up with 24 years of travel nonstop to Delaware, New York, uh, lots of long hours. Uh, they deserve a lot, if not all the credit. But I'm also grateful to my colleagues uh, at Latham and the many mentors and friends I've had in this business along the way who've supported me and had my back at various times. Uh, I always strive to surround myself and my deals with the best attorneys and the best team. And so I wanna just say that any success that I've achieved over these years is really attributable to that team and, and to the people behind me. So thank you again, I thank, I thank the journal. I hope to uh, connect with uh, some of you all soon. Well, Jeff, before we let you go, I do have a question for you. And I'm wondering, what is the advice that you're constantly giving to your clients that perhaps some of our viewers could benefit from? Uh, keep a good record if you're in governance and you're on a board. Uh, in this litigious environment that we're in, especially in restructuring, I think maintaining uh, accurate minutes at the board level is probably the most protective thing you can do if, if you're on a company uh, in management or at a board. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff, great advice. All right, up next is our intellectual property category. Our finalists are Michael DeVries at Kirkland & Ellis. In the last two years, he secured over $2.2 billion in plaintiff side jury verdicts for his clients. Christina Goodrich at KNL Gates. She has taken on a number of impactful pro bono cases fighting for the rights of transgender women. Ben Hattenbeck at Iral and Manila. Ben's practice is focused on intellectual property litigation and counseling with an emphasis on the trial of patent infringement matters. Melanie Howard at Loeb and Loeb. As protests around racial injustice organized nationwide, Melanie worked pro, no, pro bono to advise the bail project. And Lauren Schneider at Lewis Roca. Lauren provides herself, prides herself on partnering with her clients to achieve her business goals and ensures budget requirements. And our honoree in the intellectual property category is Christina Goodrich with KNL Gates. Christina, congratulations. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Margaret and Josh. I really appreciate it. And thank you to the Los Angeles Business Journal for this award. I'm honored to be among these amazing nominees. Congratulations to the other winners today, one of whom is my mentor and friend. And thank you to one of my key mentors, Paul Sweeney, who continues to be an inspiration to me. I see my role um, as part of the IP group leadership here at KL Gates to promote an inclusive environment that recruits, promotes, supports, and values women and diverse attorneys in, in, in the intellectual property practice group. And so receiving this award just further fuels uh, the fire in me to continue to do that. Uh, I'm dedicated to changing what IP teams look like and think like and their backgrounds because I truly believe that with diversity comes innovation, which is key to success. Uh, you know, I worked my way through undergrad law school where raising two kids. It was hard, uh, but it was worth it. And my children who are grown now uh, saw the sacrifices we as a family made to get to this point. And their love and support is just incredibly valuable. Um, I thank you again for this award, which just means the world to me. Thank you, Christina. Um, I couldn't agree more with you on your comments about diversity leading to innovation. Let me ask you this. Um, can you share one particularly significant accomplishment that you and your team had this year that you were really proud of? You know, there are so many. I, I will go back and talk about our pro bono work because it is important. And you mentioned that when you first introduced me, you know, we have worked uh, both in connection with Lambda Legal and on our own 
um, to vindicate the civil rights of transgender women who were assaulted in prison. And among all of my many cases that I've had and consulting I've done and appeals, I still always go back to those as the most meaningful. Um, you know, trying to ensure that people are treated uh, with respect and with dignity uh, is incredibly important to me. So uh, I'll always go back to those. Well, that's certainly significant. Thank you for all of your work on that in that area and um, your support. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Yes, congratulations, Christina. And up next, I'm pleased to announce the employment labor and employment attorney award category. And our finalists are Emily Burkhart Vicente with Hutton Andrews Perth. She uses her leadership role to promote and celebrate diversity by helping women lawyers achieve success. Camilo Echevarria, Davis Wright Tremaine. He's a board member of the California Minority Council Program, providing minority attorneys with opportunity for professional development. Theanne Evangelis, Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher. She serves on the board of the California Women's Law Center. Nikki Chitana, Jackson Lewis. Nikki has spent the majority of her career focusing on complex class action litigation in wage and hour matters. And Dwayne McKenzie, Cox, Castle, and Nicholson. And Dwayne is a longtime supporter of the LA Phil and is part of the Philharmonics Council. And our honoree in labor and employment is Theanne Evangelis with Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher. And I've learned that Theanne is unable to join us this afternoon. So we'll congratulate her and be moving on to the next category. Josh, back to you. Well, congratulations, Theanne. Our final firm attorney category is corporate. The finalists are Andrew Appleberg at Greenberg Blesker who provides advice on mergers and acquisitions, private equity, joint ventures, and licensing deals. Robert Darwell at Shepard Mullen, Richter and Hampton. He has worked on the development, finance, production, and distribution of hundreds of motion pictures and television productions. Michael Lindsay with Steinbrecher and Span. He has more than 40 years of experience in the areas of intellectual property, cyber law, and trade regulation. Daniel Lynch, at Aiken Gump, Stress, Howard Feld. He regularly mentors junior LGBTQ plus lawyers at Aiken Gump and participates in the firm's recruiting efforts at various events. And Monica Schilling with Kirkland and Ellis. Within the past year and a half, she has worked on nonstop deals with clients to raise over $10 billion in capital. Our honor in this, honoree in this category is Monica Schilling, Kirkland and Ellis. Monica, welcome. Thanks for being here. Gosh, thanks for having me. I just, I just want to thank LABJ for this incredible honor. I know a lot of the nominees, and I'm just thrilled to be in this, um, in this club. Uh, I wanted to start and, and actually echo some of the other nominees' sentiments with how much joy I get from my job. I think um, lawyers don't hear that very much. I've just lucked into this profession where I get to be creative and, and feed my analytical monster at the same time, um, which is not something I would have ever thought. Um, I also want to encourage people to help out those, those kids who are trying to get to law school and don't really know what it's like to be a lawyer. That was me in Kansas City having no clue how to achieve my goal and a super nice guy named Wade Dorothy, who was one of my dad, one of my friend's dads, gave me a summer job. and. In that summer job, I learned a lot. I learned how to fight my own speeding tickets, which was great. Um, I also had um, a, a male lawyer who I won't name tell me that it was crazy for me to want to be a lawyer, that all women lawyers were pushovers, or you can guess what the other word was. So that was actually really motivating. Um, and thanks to my sponsors and mentors around, along the way, particularly Jerry Coben and Mike Warnoff. Um, they've been great colleagues. Um, I've had great colleagues. I've been really, really lucky. I have a great assistant. I want to mention her, Miriam Baluki, because without her, I, I wouldn't get all the stuff done I need to get done. And now that we're back in the office, she's she's putting me to task. Um, and thank my, my law firm, Kirkland & Ellis. They've provided me an incredible platform. I've practiced at a couple firms. They've all been great, but this one really has been amazing. Um, I, I, I got to put a plug in for KCRW. I'm on the board. It's my favorite station. I listen to it late at night while I'm working. Um, anybody who doesn't know it, please listen to KCRW. 
Um, and thanks to my family and particularly my partner, Cesar Montijo, who deals with me interrupting everything we're doing to take phone calls. Um, so I hope to get to see you all soon and in person, and I hope everybody has a great holiday season. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thanks. Um, you know, be, being in the corporate award category, it's such a such an expansive category. Can you maybe share with us um, something that has been particularly challenging about your role in the last two years? So I am, uh, I'm a dinosaur. I do both capital markets and mergers and acquisitions. So that actually makes me the perfect person you want on your team for a DSPEC, which is like being in a law school exam every day of your career. So it's been great. It's been challenging. I've learned a lot. Um, and that's probably, that's, yeah, that's my final answer. Wonderful. Congratulations, Monica. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. I want to congratulate all of our firm attorney nominees, finalists, and honorees. We're now going to shift our attention to the second half of the awards program. And it's my pleasure to introduce the 2021 class of in-house council nominees. Here they are. Congratulations to all of our nominees. All right, this year, we're gonna be announcing three finalists and one winner in each of five different categories. The first category for in-house counsel is for nonprofit. The finalists are Gregory Shatina at City of Hope. He also leads the corporate risk management department and the design of City of Hope's insurance program. Stephanie Villasenor at Norton Simon Museum. She's responsible for developing and implementing all of the museum's safety policies and procedures. And Sean White, who was formerly with the Barack Obama Foundation and just recently moved to the Smith Family Circle. She's a tireless advocate for women and young girls, immigrants, and the LGBTQ communities. Congratulations to our honoree in the nonprofit category, Stephanie Villasenor with Norton Simon Museum. Stephanie, welcome, congratulations. Thank you. Um, thank, thank you for having this. I, I wanna start by thanking the Los Angeles Business Journal for having an event like this that um, really honors and acknowledges the role that council can and does play in supporting an organization's mission. Um, I wanna also thank uh, Amelia Sargent and her wonderful colleagues at Willington uh, for kindly nominating me for this award. Um, and finally, I wanna thank um, all, all of my colleagues at the Norton Simon Museum um, and really all of my colleagues in the arts communities. Um, the arts, like so many communities, really took a hit during COVID, um, during the entire pandemic and really they're still getting on their feet right now. Um, and yet uh, the entire community came together when our physical facilities couldn't be open to really do everything that could be done to try to bring the arts, um, the visual arts, the performing arts um, into people's homes so that people can um, continue enjoying that when we couldn't be together in person. Um, I, I feel so lucky to be able to support this community and to be able to support the Norton Simon Museum. Um, and I'm just really grateful that I can come to a job that I am uh, so excited and, and as some people have said, joyful to come to every single day. Thanks, Stephanie. You know, we, we've had an opportunity to report on, on so many different organizations where people came together, just like you mentioned. And, you know, I imagine that being counsel at a nonprofit is 
both extremely rewarding, um, but challenging at the same time. So my question is, how is it different for you to work at a nonprofit um, and the work that you have to perform than say a for-profit? What are those challenges and how is it unique? Oh, well, <laughs> so my, my for-profit work was always at law firms. And so there's the one big difference of being at a law firm versus being in-house. Um, but, but what I enjoy about being at a nonprofit, my background is in nonprofit tax work. My, my, um, what I enjoy about being at a nonprofit is that it is solely mission focused. You really have uh, an entire you know, organization full of people, everybody from administrators to operational people to legal that are coming together to carry out a, a mission that, that you're all very invested in. So having that kind of um, singular, single-mindedness is kind of makes for great camaraderie, makes for a really great work environment. I love that. It's at the end of the day, it's all about the mission. Thanks, Stephanie. Congratulations, Stephanie. Um, up next, I'm pleased to announce the private company category. And these have been split into small, mid-size and large based on company size. So I'm gonna start with the small category. And our finalists are Max Garrison, Leaselock. And Max joined Leaselock as a young startup in the year after he passed the California State Bar. Jennifer Levin Stearns, Gold Coast Direct. And Jennifer oversees all legal issues pertaining to Gold Coast Direct's operations. And Chris Ramos, Time by Ping. He is also a co-founder of Time Foundation, a nonprofit coming out from Time by Ping. And our honoree is Jennifer Levin Stearns with Gold Co. Direct. Jennifer, we'd like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you. I want to start by saying that I'm so humbled to be nominated among such a great group of in-house lawyers. Sorry about that. Um, I want to start by saying that um, I'm so humbled to be nominated amongst uh, such an amazing group of in-house lawyers, as well as all of the other nominees that the Los Angeles Business Journal so carefully se selected. Um, I, I, it was always a goal of mine to move in-house, and so um, I'm incredibly happy to have achieved that goal personally. Um, especially at a company like Gold Co., which is filled with an amazing management team that I get to work closely with every day uh, that has taught me a lot both about business and kind of honed my legal skills by being so close to the business side of uh, the company that, of Gold Co., the company that I work for. Um, and it feels especially great to be recognized um, in my role as an in-house attorney since it has always been a goal of mine to, to kind of get here. So I appreciate it and thank you again. Well, thanks, Jennifer. And, and you touched on this a bit when you were um, just saying a few words now, but if you could just revisit for us a little bit of what you find most rewarding about your role, since you had wanted to be in-house, um, what is it about being in-house in that is most rewarding for you? Um, it, certainly it's the ability to, I, I think, the closer you are to when, when I was at, a, um, at my, the law firm that I work for, the closer I was to the client, the better I felt my legal advice was um, because I had a true understanding or I thought I had a true understanding of sort of what their business objectives were and how the company was really run. Now, as an in-house attorney, I feel even closer, of course, to how the business is really run. And I've also taken on the business role of, of um, operations for the company in general. Um, and so the thing I find most rewarding is that sort of blend of being able to provide legal advice truly in, in the capacity of the business and how it's run. Well, great. Thank you, Jennifer, and congratulations again. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Jennifer. Next up is the mid-sized private company category. Our final star, Patrick Monahan at SADA. He's kept the company on track with mutually beneficial negotiations and compliance related matters. Mohan Nadi at ByteDance. He leads their team of lawyers supporting the monetization initiatives of new product features for creators and advertisers. And Betsy Tucci at 
in stride. She serves as a member of the Women in Tech series and hiring interviewing for an inclusive culture. Our honoree in the mid-sized company category is Mohan Nadi with Bite Dance. Mohan, welcome. Thank you, Josh, and thank you, Margaret. Um, I'm so pleased to be here, and, and thank you to the Los Angeles Business Journal for hosting uh, this award, and congratulations to all the nominees uh, on their amazing accomplishments. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be included in this esteemed group of attorneys. Um, it's funny that uh, you know now we are considered, I guess, ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok, is considered to be a mid-sized company um, in the Los Angeles area. So I was one of the first attorneys in-house, uh, joined the beginning of 2019. And I've seen the phenomenal growth of the company over the past two years, and particularly uh, in the last year and a half or so. Um, and uh, just seeing uh, an, an amazing variety of business and legal challenges and everything um, that uh, I've been able to accomplish really uh, is a result of my amazing colleagues, both in the legal team uh, and in the company. And I wanna thank all of them uh, for their incredibly hard work. Um, and uh, also just acknowledge how they were able to come on board and join this global company in the midst of uh, this, this you know, global pandemic. And the vast majority of my team members actually haven't met one another. Um, so they joined offline in a very uh, special situation. We're hoping to be able to all work together in person in our amazing um, Culver City office. But what they've been able to accomplish um, over the you know the past year and a half or so is, is nothing short of, I think, uh, just absolutely remarkable. And, and I want to thank all of them um, for everything that they've done. Yeah, you know, you mentioned growth and you mentioned challenges. So I'm going to add on to that just a little bit. You know, as, as a huge tech company, global tech company, um, maybe give us an example of how your work has changed. One or two of those challenges that you talk about um, that's in, you know, impacted your company over the last two years during the pandemic. Boy, uh, where should I start? I mean, I, I could go on for a long time. I mean, we faced, for example, geopolitical challenges, as you might uh, know. Um, you know. We've been in the headlines a lot. Um, I think that I think for our internal and external business partners, what's been um, very fluid and challenging is, um, I'd say, the ever-changing world of regulation when it comes to tech companies, and in particular, uh, the data security space. So with our uh, creator partners and our advertising partners, we regularly receive questions about how their data will be utilized, um, how uh, you know their partnerships with us um, impact uh, themselves, and um, how they can sort of build uh, their profiles on the platform. And our responses have had to change in line with ever-changing regulation and laws. Um, and so I think that's been one of the paramount challenges. And I think that we've done just a, a phenomenal job in, in keeping up with it. And so again, credit goes to all of uh, my teammates and, and colleagues. Yeah, I imagine that's been quite a challenge. You, you, you mentioned, you know, some of the uh, the world press and just the, the secu security challenges, and it, it's got to be an awful lot. Um, thanks for all the great work you're doing. Uh, on behalf of my 13 year old daughter, I can also thank you for all the great work being done there. Uh, she's a big fan. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats, Mohan. And now I'm pleased to announce the in-house counsel private large size category. And our finalists are John Erickson with Webbush Securities. John's role includes handling litigation, regulatory and transactional matters for the firm and their committees. Patrick Kirby with WebCore. Patrick has helped lead the implementation of initiatives centered on work-life balance company-wide. And Joel Ricklin with Prime Healthcare. And Joel is a member of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee for the California Society of Healthcare Attorneys. And our honoree is Patrick Kirby with WebCore. Patrick, we'd like to invite you to come off mute and say a few words. Well, thanks so much uh, to Josh and Margaret and to the Los Angeles Business Journal uh, for putting on such a great event each year. Um, I have to say, I'm, I'm really honored to be in the company of 
such a, a truly accomplished group of attorneys uh, this afternoon, uh, or in my case uh, right now, late tonight, uh, as I'm currently joining uh, from my hotel room in London uh, on one of my first major work trips of uh, the last year and a half, uh, which is quite exciting. Uh, first off, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, my legal team at Web4 uh, for the absolutely stellar and diligent and creative work uh, that they do on a, a daily basis uh, across the company. And I certainly consider this award to be uh, as much a recognition of the fantastic attorneys and, and support staff uh, that I have the honor of working with, uh, with within our legal group. Um, as lawyers, uh, of course, where would we be without our clients? Um, I think I'm incredibly fortunate uh, to work for a top-notch company, Web4, uh, as my only client, uh, and with a truly great team of leaders that are uh, helping to really push the boundaries of sustainable construction and building uh, genuinely iconic projects across the state of California. Uh, and who have certainly put a lot of trust in me to uh, to help out along the way. I think in a, in a profession that can often be tough and have its frustrations, um, I can genuinely say that I'm uh, currently in my my legal dream job, uh, and I consider myself to have been uh, truly blessed to work with a, a small number of mentors over the course of my career. Uh, who have invested in me and without whom I absolutely would not be uh, where I am today. Last, uh, but certainly not least, um, I also want to give a quick shout out uh, to my wonderful wife and best friend, Brittany, uh, my seven-year-old daughter, Reagan, and my five-year-old son, Owen, uh, for all your love and support. Uh, love you guys, and uh, I'll see you back home in just a few days. Well, Patrick, before we let you go uh, into your evening, um, mental health is very important and a topic we're all discussing a lot with the pandemic. And I'm just wondering if you can tell us some uh, more about some of the work-life balance initiatives that you've implemented at WebCore. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, it's certainly something that, uh, that I, could, I could talk on at length, but I will say uh, that I think one of the, the most important things that we've done as a company, uh, especially over the last uh, couple of years in dealing with the pandemic, uh, is just that uh, having the ability to be flexible, uh, even in an organization uh, like WebCore as a general contractor, uh, where uh, we're physically building projects uh, across the state and oftentimes uh, requires people to be uh, on the front lines of, of building those projects uh, physically. We've really tried to be creative and find opportunities to uh, invest in, in our people, uh, invest in their uh, ability to, you know, take time off, uh, even in a time when it's, it's hard to, to justify going on vacation since uh, there's oftentimes been nowhere to really go over uh, over the last uh, couple of years, but I think um, we've really tried to to expand what we consider to be uh, a, a genuine focus on safety culture uh, on our project sites, and uh, and expand that into what it looks like to actively care for. Uh, employees even off of our job sites when it comes to mental health and, and work-life balance. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. Congratulations, Patrick, and safe travels back from London. Okay, we are down to our final award of today's program. It's for the public company category. The finalists are Elizabeth Atley with CBRE. Liz is active in the Latina community, serving as treasurer on the board of Hispanias Organized for Political Equality. Elena Avakian with Snap Inc. She works with the tech platforms and e-commerce commercial team and supports clients across Snapchat, Bitmoji, and Spectacles. And Caroline Galanti with Bank of America. She's a member of the Legal Department Diversity and Inclusion Business Community, where she co-chairs its employee inclusion work stream. Our honoree is Elizabeth Atley with CBRE. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Thank you, Josh. And thank you to the Los Angeles Business Journal for this terrific award. Um, 
I wanted to say that I posted the social media card that you gave me and I've received such amazing response to that. It's really been a great journey. And I kind of wonder if this is how Oscar nominees feel. Anyway, congratulations to my co-nominees. It's truly an honor to be a member of this auspicious group. Of course, I want to thank my family, my amazing and supportive husband, Steve, my kids, Tom, Grace, and Ellie, who never cease to amaze and always inspire me, my sisters, Carla, Chelo, and Sherry, and my brother, Bill, and even my mother-in-law, Nancy, who have all provided love and support, all without whom I wouldn't have this career. Thank you to all of my friends, some who aren't even in the legal profession. They're on this call. Thank you for their support. For those of you who don't know, CBRE is the world's largest commercial real estate company, and we serve more than 100,000 employees in the legal risk, ethics, and compliance group. I want to thank my coworkers, our general counsel and motivational leader, Larry Midler, and the legal risk and ethics and compliance team globally. The team not only works hard, but they also really care. CBRE's rise values of respect, integrity, service, and excellence are personified in this group of outstanding professionals, many of whom I am lucky enough to call friends. I am also personally proud of CBRE. Our DE&I efforts are uh, fantastic. I'm the executive sponsor for our Ola Latino ERG, and I have the full backing of our company to advance and support the careers of our Latino and Hispanic professionals. CBRE has also pledged to spend $3 billion on diversity suppliers by 2025 and reach a net zero emission by 2040. We've, CBRE has also afforded me the opportunity to get involved with some fantastic organizations, including HOPE, Hispanas Organized for Political Equality. It's a nonpartisan organization that teaches Latinas in California how to raise our voices for topics important to us and our communities. I'm also on the board of the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Southern California, it does such incredible work and brings hope to families and the children who need the love and attention of their nearby parents. And finally, I'm proud to be on the Gould USC Law Center Board of Counselors, where I serve on the first generation committee to try to help break down barriers so others who want to join in our noble profession can. I was not a first generation college or even law school student. I have had the fabulous role models of my mentors, including my grandfather in Mexico, who was a lawyer, a judge, and a senator, my father, and my sister here in the United States. And then of course, non-legal influences like my late mother, who taught me that respect and dignity are core to helping others. So thank you to all who are here, who lasted till the very end, and who are helping me to celebrate. And thank you, Josh, and especially the Los Angeles Business Journal for this honor. Congratulations, Elizabeth, and, and you nailed it. We, we like to consider this LA's version of the legal Oscars. So <laughs> if you're part of this. Let me ask you one question before we wrap up here. Um, you know, as a public company, you face different challenges than private ones, just as nonprofits face other different challenges as well. Um, how is working at a very large global public company different than a private one in your, in your role? So I recently became the chief ethics and compliance officer globally for this company. And I have to say that dealing with all of the public company requirements, uh, our SEC filings, the certifications, handling uh, the requirements of the Department of Justice, uh, FTC, everything that you may not even consider is real estate because we do everything from, we like to say from disposition, from dirt to disposition um, is a challenge. And so that's why I think my team, we really have to rely on each other. We're a team about 150 globally. I believe a private company has more leeway and is not quite under the microscope to the same extent. And I've learned that through our acquisitions of private companies where there is quite a uh, learning curve on what's expected of both financial recording and reporting, as well as some cultural differences that uh, you have to overcome when you get integrated into a large public company like CBRE. 
Well, thank you so much and congratulations. Uh, appreciate you being here. Thanks, you know, Josh. Oh, thank you. We've now had a chance to hear from uh, many amazing legal profession professionals. And I think you can see why the past two years have been particularly challenging and also particularly impressive at the same time. How about a round of applause for all of our nominees, finalists and honorees. What an impressive group again this year. I'd like to thank Margaret Keene for joining me and presenting today's awards. Thank you to the Gould School of Law. Um, I'm gonna remind you all that you'll be able to read more about our leaders in law in our November 29th business journal issue, both in print and in digital versions. Additionally, um, there will be a recorded version of this entire program available on labusinessjournal.com in the next couple of days. So if there's somebody you'd like to pass this on to who wasn't able to join us, it's a great opportunity for them to view it. Or if you want to slow and pause uh, when your name was on the screen, uh, take a picture and share more social the way Elizabeth was sharing that she did, that would be wonderful. A huge congratulations to our entire legal community. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for every single one of our participating sponsors. And we look forward to hosting you all, most likely in person next year. Thank you. Until then, please be safe. Have a great day.